Thank you, Judith. Yeah. Well, thank you for inviting me. It, it is three tiers because I wanted, I, it was three T's and I thought I'm getting a bit too aggressive here. Uh, but the tears are for the patients and for the frustration that came out at the end of the, the last lady who spoke was, was out very angry about things and we are frustrated as well. So the three T's, Judy's already given these out, travesty of science, tragedy for patients and tantamount to fraud. And I was advised that I shouldn't be saying this because I would get sued. And I said, fine, bring it on because I can prove it. Uh, so, <laughs> so this is where it all starts. Uh, you may recognise the name at the top of the slide. This is Professor Wesley's attempt in The Lancet to introduce and occupy all the territories in every speciality with his uh, somatoform disorders and that's what this is how he's doing it now I think all you ladies should be very cross and if he was here he might like to poke his eyes out because uh, he, he's saying things which PMS is not is not psychosomatic you know I don't know what he knows about hormones but I think he should know something about them so on here you can see uh, when I get up MCS, multiple chemical sensitivity, because that's the link with the next slide. But all these are specialities which have their own issues with people who defy any kind of uh, uh, diagnosis. And the trouble is, you can't explain this by conventional paradigms. Uh, conventional therapy is ineffective. Uh, more common in women than men, therefore it's hysteria. Uh, share non-specific symptoms. I, I do abhor this word non-specific symptoms or uncertain symptoms or whatever because they're only uncertain because we're not looking at them carefully enough. Uh, and these syndromes all respond to the same treatment. CBT and graded exercise. So, so now, even if you've got Borrelia, you know, you, you, you're down for CBT and graded exercise. Uh, but chlamydia, you're all right, you can get rid of that. So, and this is, this is the biopsychosocial model. Well, it's an ideology, it's become an ideology. And that, that's the trouble with it. People are so fixated on it that they stop thinking and they stop reading anything else that doesn't uh, say the same thing. Well, at the same time, this is the Merck Manual in 1999, these syndromes of uncertain origins became into the fore. And included with them was MCS, uh, MECFS, which I know a bit more about than, most, than, than I do about most of the things, and the Gulf War uh, veterans and, and Gulf War syndrome. This is the first Gulf War, which gets forgotten. People talk about the, f the Gulf War, it started in 2003. 2003. <laughs> 2003. Not in 1990 and 1991. It's those veterans who've been uh, neglected. It's the 25th anniversary of that war, and nothing's been done about them. They've been given great exercise and CBT. That's what they've been offered by Professor Wesley, who's the MOD advisor. So, <coughs> the problem with all these, which came up in the, the Merck Manual, is that they've got a vast array of uh, sy systems, and sympt uh, symptoms and systems that are affected. And the, the problem is that considering all these complaints and disability, the results of routine laboratory tests are strikingly normal. How often have you heard that? You know, you're quite normal, well, except your crackers, really. That's, uh, that's the sort of thing that they tell you. And this is somatoform, this is somatof somatization, somatoform disorders. And that's, they, oh, they, they've got other words for it, neurasthenia, which is from World War I, for crying out loud. Uh, just as that. Hysteria, or pups and mus. Uh, have you been told pups and mus? Mus. You go to the doctor and you say, I'm not very well, doctor. I've got all these things wrong with me. He said, you've got multiple unexplained symptoms. <laughs> That's a diagnosis. Off you go. Pops is persistent, unexplained physical symptoms. You know, it's getting worse. But this, these are words of ignorance. They're not telling you anything. And, and the, the go for vets are very cross because they say, I knew that before I came in. You know, I came to see you as a doctor. What are you going to tell me? Now, that's... So the, this is the language. And if you, you read it in, in the papers on these... Uh, Conditions. The Gulf War vets, uh, the, the people, they set up a uh, department to look at this and they're writing these reports and they'd all got muss or pups or puss or whatever. Uh, 
But the, the story that I've got very much involved with is the organophosphate poisoning um, because that's what happens with the shepherds and the farmers. And they really don't, don't just look after sheep, <coughs> the farmers, they look after pigs and they look after grain stores. When a go man goes into the grain stores and turns it with the organophosphate, so he's in an atmosphere where he's turning this stuff in a, in a closed area and they, they go down like with... The, with the, uh, organophosphate poisoning. This lady, Kathleen Sullivan, died from which something was mentioned already today, multi-system atrophy. That's, that's, what's wrong with that? Everything. And that, that's, that's a pro that was a problem. The on, the on the far side is the latest one, which is not quite on the, on the screen. Aerotoxic syndrome. This, it, I don't know how many of you know that car uh, <coughs> organophosphates are in uh, engine oils as protectants to the engine. And the air into all commercial aircrafts, except the new Boeing Dreamliner 787, comes in to the cabins through the engines. So it leaks from around the seams in the engines and everybody's getting a dose of organophosphates, everybody. Now the people who get it most are the people in the aeroplane most, and these are cabin crews and pilots. And a lot of these have been invalided out and Richard Westlake the lad over here uh, died as a result of this. And the Dorset coroner, who's called a sheriff for some reason, uh, he uh, insisted that this was aerotoxic syndrome against the advice from um, the industry and doctors who were saying, no, it's not, it's hyperventilation. Uh, you know, which is an insult to men who've, thir who've had 30 years of flying experience and to say it's hyperventilating when you bring the aircraft down to land. No, it's not. He's paralysed by organophosphates. And he issued a, a statement to the government and, and to the industry, but they've ignored it. And they're trying to <laughs> explain it in other ways. And they, they've for, unfortunately got a hook they can hang it on at the moment. And these are the deployed Gulf veterans. 25 to 30% of these lads are ill from the 1991. So that's about 17,000 out of 53,000. Know. You, you don't know that, do you? No, most people don't know it. But that's... And the, the organophosphates were, we, we didn't have any, so we shipped out diazinon, which is sheep dip, uh, because we didn't have any. But they wanted to spray the areas to keep down leishmania, which is carried by sandflies, and visceral leishmania is very nasty. Uh, they used also malathion for dusting prisoners. Uh, Chlorpyrifos was what the Americans used. Uh, the government said, we didn't use them, we didn't take any. No, we, we didn't take any after all. And this was, this was uh, Nicholas Soames who said this to, to Parliament. And he had to apologise when somebody else said, well, we did take a bit. And somebody else said, well, we took a bit more than that. And we did buy some locally in Arabic, so we had not a clue what we were buying. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's what happened. And this is the deception that was raised uh, earlier, in the, uh, just before we had our coffee break. Uh, this, this is all full of this sort of stuff. And I can get very angry about it if I'm not very careful. So if I become incoherent, just let me know. Now, the other thing that, that's involved with the Gulf War vets was the organophosphate uh, pesticides, which are phosphates, uh, nerve agents, which are phosphonates, which uh, sarin is a, is a nerve agent gas which was most around at the time, uh, and periodostigmine bromide, which we actually gave to our guys to protect against nerve agents. I mean, that's the irony. They were given periodostigmine bromide to protect them against potential nerve agents, uh, which were then so we told weren't there, but they were there. Um, and so this, this, this adds up to a, what I call a cholinergic triple whammy. Ian Hill was Major Ian Hill and he uh, died and I gave evidence at the uh, inquest. Um, he, the doctors there didn't know what to do with him. He said, well, he's got global illness syndrome, you know. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> he's completely knackered, really. That's what it means. Uh, so the, and, and poor old Ian died. Uh, Tragically and really in some, in some really tra tragic circumstances uh, and pain. Uh, the, the last bit on vaccines, uh, the non-deployed were often vaccinated and they developed syndrome as well. But that was due to uh, in immune disturbance and uh, autoimmune disturbance and affecting the hypothesis, the, hy uh, the pituitary gland. So they were not producing any. Uh, these are strong, tough soldiers and they've got no libido. And it was the wives who told me that because they wouldn't tell me that. They do now, but they didn't then. So this is the, this is the introduction of travesty of science. There's plenty of already. 
I just thought this would just lighten the load a little bit. Uh, so the PACE trial, uh, it, was there, it, was it was designed to validate the CBT and graded exercise that was being used to treat MECFS. That's what it, that was intended to do. The fact it's used to treat lots of other things uh, is important because it was claimed to be a, a randomised controlled trial. It was neither, according to statisticians and clinical trial specialists. It certainly wasn't controlled because there's no control group. It made no objective measurement. Not a single objective measurement was utilised in presenting the, the, f the first paper. Objective measurements were made, but they weren't the, what they, uh, the measurements that they wanted. It wasn't the answer that they wanted. So they said, oh, well, we've got a reason for not doing that. And one, uh, uh, one uh, uh, objective measurement was a walking test. But we couldn't do it properly because we only had 10 yards and had to turn around several times. And it's normally 30 yards or 50 yards. You know, I mean, that's just eyewash, really. But no objective measurements. Now, I'm a scientist, and scientists make objective measurements. If you don't make objective measurements, you're not doing science. So they're not doing science. No blinding, and this is a sine qua non for subjective data testing. If you don't blind it, everybody knows what's going on. And everybody knew what was going on. They knew who was in what group and, and uh, where they'd come from. So we had four groups, no control group. Um, and these, um, th these were divided up into uh, adaptive pacing, uh, cognitive behavioural therapy and graded exercise with, with just standard uh, medical treatment, which meant you saw a doctor once in a while and he said, thank you, but you're, you're all right. Uh, and there was nothing, they didn't do anything to them really. So uh, it was an intergroup comparison. But the other thing they did was they kept, they changed the original entry requirements and primary outcomes throughout the study. Before this was started, what was in the pr protocols was not complied with. They kept changing them as they went along, and it'll come out as they're going along, uh, go along with this. Uh, and they're all just ma manipulated. Uh, you know, we can move the goal po goalposts. I found this, I couldn't resist putting this in. Th this is Owen Patterson, who was a Minister for the Environment, who was trying to justify the cull on the badgers. And he, he said at one stage, well, the badgers have moved the goalposts. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if budgets can do it, I'm, I'm sure people can do it a dash out better. And then the final absurdity, which is there are overlapping scores which will allow entry requirements to say that at the end of the, you can have a lower score than, than you enter with and be re regarded as recovered. Now that just, it, it's crazy, isn't it? You know, people say, well, how does that work then? But that, what, what they were doing was developing and moving the score so much to correct for the data which was giving them the wrong answer. So you finished up with scores that were overlapping on the two principal outcomes, which were on physical function scales. And this is, this is what it looks like. Uh, this, is, this is where we are. This was the, these are just the uh, physical function scores for various age groups. Uh, this is the, PACE trial uh, started out at 65, but they couldn't, uh, started out at 60, but they couldn't get enough people in there. So they said, well, people with 65 can come in. But the recovery level was 60. So you've got people going in, could go at 65 with this score, and it's out of 100, uh, and they could come out with 60, and they'd got worse. But they were recovered. You know, say, so how does that work? Well, I don't think it does work myself. I, I can't see how that can work at all. Um, so everyone drew attention to this, and we have to explain it, but they haven't. Uh, so that's the one they just cannot explain. But if you, you set off also saying, where, where's, where's normal? What sort of reference uh, scores do we want? Well, uh, you, could, you could say the, the average age of the trial was 39. And you could, uh, this requires a, a figure up here of about 93. We take this line. And uh, that's a normative data. So that's the score they should be looking at. But they're going in with these 60s and 65s and coming out with 60. That's people waiting for a, a lung transplant or having a severe heart attack. These are people who are not well, you know. 
And to regard that as in any way recovered is just an absolute abuse of language and is tantamount to fraud, I think, but there you go. Um, but they also try to manipulate the reference uh, numbers. Uh, at the bottom here, we've got, we, we'll, use, we'll use all age averages, which is around about 78, uh, or a working age average, which is 85. Oh, far too, far too healthy, those people. Uh, so the, the, the reference range came down from about up, up here in the 80s down to this level. You know, it's just crazy. It doesn't make any sense at all. Oh, let's just go back to that. No, 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 it's, sorry, it's on this one. Uh, and the fatigue scoring was even worse because the fatigue scoring was done on two, two, two different uh, grades, uh, uh, counting uh, scales. One was the shoulder scale, which he was one of the principal investigators in this study, and the other was a Likert scale, which uh, is, has different numbers in it. Uh, this is a 33 scale, and this is an 11-point scale. But you can see here that the Likert scale corresponds to the um, uh, 6 on the uh, shoulder scale. Well, actually, the shoulder scale started at 3. The lower you are, the fitter you are. So down here somewhere is three, and they moved that up to six because they were too, too unwell, really. They're just, they're just trying to close everything, all the gaps up. And this figure is about 18 on the Likert scale, corresponds to six, seven, or eight on the Jolter scale. So which one is it? Well, it pays your money and takes your choice, really. That's, that's really what they're trying to do. So the, this is from Rebecca Golding. She is a biostatistician, I'm not. So, uh, but she is a biostatistician, and it's a very powerful thing. That, that's a full reference. I've got the papers here if, if you want to look at them. But they, uh, she's, she's done a cracking good job here, and she's just driven the uh, coat and horses through the whole thing. And what she says at the end of it all is, the best we can get from the PACE trial is the study design is essential for good science. Everyone would say yes. But... The flaws in this design were enough to doom it from the start. Before you even started, the, the thing was doomed because the protocols had been manhandled uh, and misused uh, and abused. So that, I mean, this is a biostatistician looking at it saying, you, you couldn't get good data out of this, whatever you wanted, because it's just so rubbish. It's been done in such a rubbish fashion. Now, the other trial that was going on and went on just before the PACE trial was a fine trial. Uh, this is a nurse-led trial in Manchester. And they concluded that the effect is small and not statistically significant after one year. The primary outcome scores, they, they were looking for a score of 75%, 75, uh, an entry of 70. So they have moved everything higher up the scale into more uh, ranges where people would be more active. The shoulder scale of three was used, which, as we saw, uh, that's how the pace trial started out, and an entry of, of four or more uh, was uh, three or less is the entry scale, the, uh, and the four or more is, is where you got successful uh, result. And the conclusion, this is a conclusion of their own people doing their own study. These are all Wesley's mates, and, you know. These are the Wesley School, as has been described. Uh, here we have CBT and grade XAD, as measured by these parameters, is not effective in treating or managing CFSME. So, but they still go on. That was a million. That cost a million quid. The pace trial cost five million. But they knew already before they started it wasn't going to work. If they'd listened, but they didn't want to listen. Well, we've got to prove it because it, we're ideologists. We're not interested in science uh, or, or getting... I hope we can. can you see this? The thing that mounts matters here, the Likert, the, this is the, the, cold, the shoulder scale, and this is the Likert scoring. And this is what happens when you do them. Now, here, this was done by a man called Martin Vink, a courageous Dutchman, a doctor with severe ME bedbound. And he scores, on the shoulder scale, he scores four, which means he's too, he, he, he's, he's, uh, compared with the pace trial of six, he's better. So uh, the lower you are, the better you are on the, ch on the shoulder scale. So he's actually wouldn't qualify to enter the trial. 
Uh, but at 18, which was the, the comparator they used on the Likert scale, he got 18. So he's too well to enter, and here he's well enough to, uh, to, uh, and to be recovered, uh, and uh, he's, he's fit enough to be recovered. Here, he's too well to, to rec he's, he's well enough to recover, but he's entered as well. You know. So I've got, it, it just drives me up the wall, this. It drives you crazy. And this, this is another slide from Mark's paper, which is, uh, I think you can, you can just about read the yeses. These were all the changes that were made by the authors themselves as they went along. Make it up as you go along, we'll change it, we'll change it, we'll change it. Move a goalpost, move a goalpost to get what you want. And this is the title of Mark's paper. The, pa the PACE trial invalidates the use of cognitive behavioural and graded exercise therapy in myalgic encephalomyelitis chronic fatigue syndrome, a review. So he's reviewed all this, and he says it invalidates it. The, so he's given the answer to his analysis. And this is a man who's got severe ME, but he's a doctor, not what he's, he knows it from that side as well. And he's, he, this, is, this is his title for the paper. Now, the other person who's done a lot in this is David Tuller. David Tuller is a science journalist. Um, and he, he's, uh, I've got all the papers here, just, just to wave them at you, just to look impressive. But David Tuller picked this up. He came to see me and he spent some time with me and, and with a lot of other people as well talking about this. Um, and particularly Tom Kinlan, which he, he did spend a lot of time with Tom. Now, what's, what's odd about these people? None of them are English, British, Scottish, Irish, <laughs> or whatever. So what are we doing about it? And this lady who got very excited, and rightly so, uh, just before coffee break, is saying, what the hell are we doing? I was talking in... in the House of Lords to a group in the House of Lords in 2012 and saying all this. The, the three T's came from that talk. Um, but what happened? Nothing happened. But the Americans have got their bit between the teeth and they've got some very powerful guns li lined up and they're all saying the same thing. This, these results are uninterpretable. These results cannot be, you can't make sense of them. These results are absurd. Uh, and, and words like that. And it's, it's become world news now. But it's not come from us. Why? Well, the answer will come back to that in a minute. Now, this is what's been sacrificed. This is my good friend Irving Spur, Dr. Irving Spur, whoops, Dr. Irving Spur, who uh, draws little cartoons when he talks about ME, and what's been sacrificed is truth. And that's his little, uh, and it's in the name of hysteria. You see who's got the hysteria, can't you? <laughs> Now, these are the tears bit. Tears of grief, frustration, unbelief. The doctor said that he could do anything for me. Again and again, people say, the doctor's just cast me aside. There's a lot of cruelty as well in this. Real cruelty. I mean, if you take a lad who's paralyzed and mute and throw him in a swimming pool because you believe, you believe, you don't know, you believe that this is, a, this is not not, it's just he's just been an awkward little beggar, uh, and they threw this. This was Ian Proctor. Do you know the Ian Proctor story? Oops. He was thrown into a swimming pool in a children's hospital by a nurse at the instructions of a psychiatrist, because well, if you do that, he will he'll shout out and he'll kick his leg, arms and legs about because he won't let himself drown. But he didn't. He sank right to the bottom and stayed there. They had to fish him out before they drowned him. I mean, this is medieval stuff. It's ducking stool stuff, really. Uh, and Sophia Mertzer, Sophia Mertzer was taken from her bed. She was a sick woman, a sick young woman. She was 32. She was taken from her bed into a mental hospital with uh, people with white coats and doctors uh, attending. And she got worse at, in the hospital because they forced on a CBT and graded exercise. She came home and she died. That's Sophie's story. Now, to a great credit uh, and great cost, her, her mum uh, has put all Sophie's records on the net. And you can see exactly what doctors were saying. And they were saying things that you couldn't, could hardly believe. She's just got to do it. We've got to make her do it. Uh, and she, this is a lad who went in bed bound. 
And I don't, how many of you know Natalie Bolton? Any, have you know Natalie Bolton? This is Voices from the Shadows. This is the story of people with severe ME. And it's, it's, well, it just defies tragedy. Uh, and I just find that if you can't weep over that, then you're not, you've lost your humanity, I think. Now, what is this? This is me to give you, this is a little test. Can you see, can you see something different there? Yeah. So, yes, you've, there you are, that's that. And where are the little lambs? We are the little lambs. That's the problem. And we, we can't fight back. But this is science's fraud. It's a wolf in sheep's clothing. And it's playing havoc with the ME community. And the, the way they're doing this is to say, OK, we've done all these studies, but we're not going to let you see it. Oh, no, no, you can't see it. It's published on the, on the grounds that we will allow people to look, see the data. Oh, we're not going to let you see it. I've got a Freedom of Information Act. Oh, we're not going to let you see it. Uh, you are vexatious asking for things like this. This is, what, this is the language they use. They are protecting their data at, at all costs, and it's, uh, it's, it's rather distressing. Now, this, this was done in 2006. This is Ian uh, Gibson's inquiry. CFME is defined as a psychosocial illness. No, it's not. It's defined by Wesley and the psychiatrists because that's what they want to make it into. But the World Health Organization says, no, it's a neurological illness. And those who are in the know, it's an immune immunological illness or immune endocrine immune uh, uh, illness. So. The, the whole point of, of this is now becoming clear. Claimants are not entitled to high level of benefit payments. We recognise that if the FE F remains as one illness or both and is defined psychosocial, then it will be in the financial interests of both the DUP, DWP, medical insurance companies, the government and the health service. That's what's behind it. And in 2006, Gibson, I, was, I gave evidence to the Gibson inquiry. They, they uh, recognised that the advisors to the D D DWP had consultants enrolled in medical insurance companies, particularly Unum, uh, Provident, uh, and private medical insurance companies uh, to ensure that it's a biopsychosocial illness because otherwise they'll have to pay out. They'll have to pay out millions and they're not going to do that at any price. It's the banks in reverse, this. We're paying the money and, and they are... Uh, uh, taking advantage of it. So that's, that's what's behind it all. And this is just, uh, well, I don't know what word to use for it really. Disingenuous. If you've been a gentleman, you've been disingenuous. Uh, if you're lying through your teeth, uh, you, you know, well that's a bit, bit over the top, isn't it? Deception and fraud. The NICE guideline, when the PACE trial came out, now NICE is supposed to be giving guidelines, f a guideline for MECFS. Uh, the one that they already got was being objected to by all patients and doctors. It wasn't suitable uh, for unfit, it was unfit for purpose. Intervention is recommended in the original guideline. Six months before you do anything about it, uh, you don't do any testing because it's not needed, because it's psychological, and they haven't got an infection, and you can't do that. Um, this is supported by the recently published PACE trial. They're just saying, we were right all the time. And so the poor old patients are now being trampled underfoot. And there are no factors which would invalidate or change the direction of the current guideline. What about total failure? You know, that's where we are. And the PACE trials can be generalised. But who are these guys? These were not severely pe sick people. We can generalise to severely sick people. If you just beat them up hard enough or drag them around long enough, they'll get fit and they'll, re they'll respond. Uh, so this is just, again, this is, this is fr rank fraud. Right, so this is the collapse of the House of Sand, really. Matthew 7, uh, chapter 31, <laughs> verse 31, I think. The, this is important. The 19th century model of psychoanalysis uh, biologism and behaviorism, these, these were not satisfying psychiatrists. 
They're looking for some integrated understanding of the link between personality and, and the body. Uh, this, is, this is from a man called McLaren. So keen have they been in their search that they embrace the so-called biopsychosocial model without ever bothering to check its details. If at any time they had in the last three decades, 30 years, it's been going on, uh, they'd done so, they would have found that you had none. They would have forced them into the embarrassing position of having to acknowledge that modern psychiatry is operating in a theoretical vacuum. Now, he was saying that in 1998, but it's still gone on for 30 years. Uh, and that's the nub of it all. And this is, this is uh, Irving Spur again. Irving Spur took over from John Richardson. John Richardson was a great uh, hero uh, in the Emmy world. Uh, he died about in 2002. I knew him very well. Uh, but this, this is uh, Irving's take on this. When Wesley was given a knighthood, he wrote to the Queen. And he said this <laughs> to her. But she didn't read it. Somebody else read it. And he gets a, a little letter back saying, the Queen does not award, uh, give awards. It's done by a committee. <laughs> Do you despair? So that's Irving. Uh, courageous, yes. So what does all this mean? First thing, the whole of government policy based on the biosphere social model now falls. All of it. Which includes uh, so much of what's, what's happening. It, mean, it, it includes the Borrelia as aspects and its psychi psychiatric falls. It means organophosphate poisoning, uh, which is affected the farmers, the flyers and the gulf fetch falls. Uh, it, it means that DUP, DWP funding has, got, has to be made to these people and compensation has to be paid, uh, especially to the last 25 years with your family ruined, your health ruined, it is going to take some compensation. Uh, now, this is a, a, a model that's espoused by the Department of Health, the NHS, NICE, MRC, which funded all this, six million quid for before the two trials, and the Department of Works and Pensions, which is sending people back to work because they think they can walk 200 yards when they walk across a room. Uh, so all that's got to go if, if we get it by the years and, and do something about it. Payments must be made to the organophosphate poison, gulf vets and coming crews. Oh, no, 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 no. It's hyperventilation. They've got mental health problems. It's all lies. And it's time the lie was called out. Insurance companies can no longer refuse to make payments to the sick with ME, OP poisoning, organophosphate poisoning, uh, fibromyalgia, the whole lot that was on that first slide. And this means that Nigel Spate and Sarah Myhill and Jean Munro and many others have been vindicated. Hallelujah. That's, that's my take. Nigel Spate has been arraigned for looking after a, a little girl whose parents were troubled when she was being seen by another doctor who was prescribing CBT and graded exercise. And Nigel uh, intervened and he's been uh, arraigned by the GMC because of that. Um, and there's a big movement to get something done about it. Sarah Myhill was, had the same issues, and they took her right to the courthouse door before they said, we're pulling the case. Because she, she got a dander up and she was going to sort them out. Uh, so uh, so that, that's, that's uh, Sarah Myhill and, and Jean Monroe and many others. There's some very good doctors around who are fighting the cause, but they're in a minority, and they're getting into difficult positions uh, with uh, the authorities. So justice and truth have prevailed. I've always thought this from the beginning. And the sufferings of uh, many of these people uh, and their labours have not been in vain. So I thank you.